to you, Christina. Hey guys, let me, there we go. Um, I'm Christina MacArthur. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, you guys know that my tagline is, hold on, I'm going to take this headphone out. It's like, I could hear myself. Um, my tagline is my niche is not having a niche. So I like to do it all, everything from lettering to um, drawing to painting. I don't have a niche. So I feel like I, um, oh, someone said I'm frozen. Sorry. Um, I feel like this is a perfect class for me to teach. I learned card making by my grandma. She taught me the basics. She's like literally a card making pro. She would have done this class with me if she wasn't on vacation in California. Anyway, um, also zebra pen is sponsoring this. So we're going to be using zebra pens, pens to make these cool designs. So I have these two designs we're going to do today. And then if there's time, I have another one as well. Um, so I'm going to flip this to my hands and I'm going to turn this front view off. Thank you, Michaels for doing that. And let me take my face off. Here we go. Okay. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, sorry guys. The light got in the way. Okay. All right. Let's wait till that stops shaking for a minute. Perfect. Okay, so we let me know in the chat if it's a little bright. I think it's a little bright. Hold on, let me turn down the brightness really quick. Okay, um, more blurry than bright. Oh no, that could, I am unsure, let's see. It's looking good here. Okay. So this is the first card we're going to do. Um, and then we'll do this card second today, a little bit about the pens we're using. If you got the list of pens online, um, I recommended that you grab the click art pens, um, as well as the journaling set that includes these Sarasa clips and these mild liners. Um, okay. Let's see if I can, if it's my end that is making it blurry one second. Um, yeah, it does seem a little on. bit blurry, Christina. On it. Okay. Did that help make it less blurry? No. Okay. Hopefully that helps make it less blurry. Um, okay. So the first one right here, I wrote down all the measurements and um, I'm going to put it right here. So this is the love measurements right here. What you're going to do is cut your card, the background color um, in an eight and a half by five and a half. So in what I recommended, I recommended that you guys purchase this specific device from Michael's because it is perfect for scoring. Um, okay. Thanks. Turn down the brightness. I will turn down the brightness. Let's see. Actually, let me do it this way. Does that help y'all love this chat thing. Hopefully that helped. No. Um, okay. Let's see here. Internet. I have full internet. I'm going to turn it off my phone. So then that might help. Okay. Let's see if that helped. It was great before everything um, started. Let's reload this. Okay. Clean the screen. Don't know what that means. Okay, so we're gonna start with this device and we'll cut it in the right... Um, shapes. However, let me move on Christina, this I have mine set to scoring. So I'm just going to, I have this other backup device that you can also purchase from Michael's too. So I don't have to transfer it back and forth to do the hey, measuring. Christina. Um, Christina. You can get both of these from Michael's. Um, I recommend this other one because it can score and cut. And that's amazing. For the purpose of this class, I will use this Fisker 
this one. Unless you're only cutting things, and then that's fine. Okay, so let's use the same color in my example. I love um, this pack of um, these packs you can buy from Michaels because it comes with a variety of the same colors, which makes fun like monochrome patterns. Okay, so as you can tell, this card is half of the um, piece of paper, which is nice because you can make two pieces, two cards out of one piece of paper. So like this says, we're gonna cut it to five and a half. So I'm gonna go and put this at five and a half right here. And I'm going to cut it and do that. I'm gonna lock the focus because that seemed to be better. Okay. Um, hopefully that helps. If not, I can trade up cameras. Um, okay, so we have the piece of paper right here. And this is one of my favorite tools that you can buy for card making. One of the most difficult things with card making is folding the dang card, okay? Like creating the perfect fold. So if you're new to card making, you need to get yourself one of these scoring um, devices. Literally will change your life. Let me show you. You take your scoring device and you line it up. So if you're cutting, you have it switched to this way. When you're scoring, you have it switched to this way. So you can make sure your line is straight. And let me get the measurements. You're going to cut, do it in half. So if this is eight and a half, four and a quarter will be where you want to score it. Now watch, I love this. And thank you for Michaels for linking that. This is literally the best. You're gonna, oh, you stay on the line right here. You push down and you have the perfect way to fold your card. It's amazing, okay? You don't have to worry. It's just, guys, get this, it is amazing, okay? All right, so I'm gonna put that to the side for now. And with this design, let me show you close up. What size are we cutting this again? Okay, so this one is cutting, you're cutting the um, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in half. What was this? I think this was hamburger wise when we went, we're in school, <laughs> elementary school, hamburger, not hot dog, hamburger wise in half. And then um, you're gonna then do it in half again with the scoring device, okay? Um, of course, I just unhooked my microphone as I moved in. Jeez, the hot mess over here. Okay, hopefully that helped me get back. Perfect. Okay, so the next part of this love measurement is, are these. Now, I don't know about you, but I like to just, I don't, I'm just, I just wing this. I don't need the exact measurements. If you need an exact measurement, I did this one. Let's see, that is a little over three and a half by um, a little over four and a half. But what I do is I take the paper I want. So this one, I use this paper, love the way these work together. And I pretty much just like eyeball it. Um, but that's cause I have done this a while. So I line it up to where I want it. I'm gonna, hold on, let me get this paper. Okay, I line it up. This doesn't happen by the way, when your um, cutter is new, mine is clearly old. Um, I line it up to where I want it. And then I'm just gonna take a pencil and mark right about here and right about here. And then I let my cutting device make it straight. So let's cut it up right here. And here. 
Okay, this is perfect. As you can see, it's pretty much the same size as that one, a little bit different. We're gonna move this out of the way. Now, with scraps of paper, I'm telling you, since my niche is not a niche, you can use this for another, obviously another project. We'll use this later for this one, but you can also use paper. Like, let's say I have a small piece that I don't know what to use it for. I keep all my paper scraps around because I like to make paper from recycled paper. Um, so that's just another idea just to always keep in mind that you can use every piece of your crafts. All right, let's bring this back in. Now, another staple for making your cards that you definitely need is this tape, right? Okay, let me tell you about this. This is double-sided tape. You lay it on smooth. A problem sometimes with tape where you take it off the tape machine is it doesn't always lay down smooth. You have that issue. This is amazing. So. We're gonna line this up and we're just gonna put the tape right there on the back. See how it, how it just glides on. For those of you who are using this for the first time, you're gliding it on on the side with the cap. So you push that down and it kind of, it grips on and that's the side where you push the tape down. And we're just gonna do, I like to do a square and then one in the middle like that. Okay, now I'm gonna line it up on this top paper. Perfect. Now you might be wondering, Christina, but what about the designs? Don't worry guys, these designs on this card are made to be put on after the card itself is made. Okay, now next we are, where did that card go? Okay. Next in this color scheme is I use more of the mid-tone pink. There are two mid-tone pinks in this pack if you bought the specific pack. Um, I'm doing the one that is closer to um, the darker, the darkest color. So it's the next one closest to the darkest color. All right, so same thing here. I'm going to take my pencil line up the corners where I like it. And I'm just gonna mark on my paper an estimate like I like would like it right here and right about here. All right, let's bust out. You know what, I will show you this other cutting device with the memory keeper. I recommend this one again more than the Fisker because it can be used for more than one thing, especially with card making. Okay, let's line this up. So same thing, you line it up with the line. So here's my mark. I'm gonna line it up right here and I'm going to come down and cut it. And look at, see how that's, you can definitely tell like it's a new blade. So it cuts way more smooth. I might want to tidy this one up. I'm going to tidy this one up while we're at it because that is going to bother me. And because it's such a small cut, I'm going to put it on top. See how it's such a tiny cut because I'm just getting off the phrase and cut it that way. Otherwise you'll jam it if you go from the edge. Just a little hack for you. There we go. Okay. All right, back to this. Sorry, I got distracted by the phrase. Okay, back to this. We're gonna mark it right here and do this. Perfect. Oh yes, and Kathleen had a good point. You can stamp on scrap paper and use it for other cards as well, yes. Okay, I'm gonna flip it so we don't have my pencil mark. Okay, and I line it up just about there. Oh, I just realized I didn't use the darkest one on that, but that's okay. Okay, line it up just about here. And I'm gonna grab this tape roller and roll it over the top. Now, because this is a card making 101 for um, 
Um, it's for all levels, but definitely catered a lot more towards beginners. Feel free to ask questions um, that you are curious of. Okay, this third piece, like I said, I kind of estimate them, but it's about right under three inches and right under, let's see, this one is right above four inches. Okay. So let's see, I'm gonna stick it on here and press it down. Now, if you are really particular, oh, I did the pencil side, but that's okay. If you guys are really particular about measurements, you can measure and make sure that each side before you place it down is exact. But look, I'm, I'm really good at estimating and the exact measurements. Pat myself on the back for that one. <laughs> Just kidding. We can all laugh at me. Okay. Lastly is this very bright color again. So um, I am going to, I like where that placement is, um, measure it up again. Like I said, I don't use a measuring um, tape but you, or a ruler, but you guys are totally welcome to do so. Um, I just place where I like it. Mark that pencil about right here and right here, just where to line up my cuts because then this device does the straight cut. Okay, so line it up straight. You push it up against this part right here. So you know it's straight. Sometimes you could still get it skitty wampus. So I like to make sure it's still um, straight in line right here. All right, we'll cut that. And then I'm gonna take this side and cut right here. I'll measure this afterwards for you guys who want the exact measurements. Okay, let's erase that little mark. Okay, so where's my ruler? Um, this is two and a half by a little over three and a half. So probably, and it's like three and two thirds. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure that looks good right there. Love it. Okay, now I'm gonna take this and tape down the back again, square with one in the middle. and make sure it's lined up right there. Okay, perfect. Now we are on to one of the best parts. I love drawing and doodling on things. Um, okay, so again, we're using zebra pen today. Um, if you make these cards, I'd love it if you tagged me, hey, Christina Mack, zebra pen and the hashtag inspired by zebra. You can also um, tag Michael's as well as at Michael's store. Um, okay, so today with the zebra pens, we're using the click art. Um, and the click art is amazing if you have children as well, because you can leave it um, clicked out like this and it does not dry out. These do not dry out, they're amazing. I can attest for that because I have left them over overnight on accident, I did, not my kids, and they do not dry out. So for this design, I recommended that this is a, this wasn't, you didn't have to use um, the Kira Rich um, glitter marker. This was just like um, optional. However, I do think this um, under color of love would really look cool with this glitter um, highlighter pen. I actually don't use it as a highlighter as much as I use it for a marker. I love the way it shines. So this would be cool. I wonder if it would capture the, doesn't capture the shine via the camera as much as I'd like it to, but it is shining really well in person. But um, so if you did happen to grab this pen from Michael's, it would look really rad under this design. Um, okay, so the key to this is there is a hack for this. I love mid-century modern looks and this has more of like a mid-century 
um, design where if you look at mid-century art, the outlines are a little bit to the side or they don't exactly match up with the edges. So that's what I was going for here. One of my favorite things to do. Okay, so let me show you a hack on how to make it look really good and even. We're gonna start with the mild liner um, highlighter pen right now, the marker, and it has a chisel tip and a bullet tip. Right now we're gonna use the chisel tip. It's funny because when I first started using these pens, I totally didn't even know there was the bullet tip on the end because I was just obsessed with this chisel tip side, but there is a bullet tip on this side as well. Okay. So if you aren't comfortable with eyeballing it, I will tell you, you are welcome to write it out beforehand. If you aren't used to um, writing out often, please feel free to write out with a pencil, L-O-V-E. That way you can make sure you get the placements the way you'd like it to. Um, however, write it out and erase it so it's very minimal to see that way. Um, it doesn't distract from your piece at the end. I recommend if you are one who needs to use pencil first to invest in a, um, and I'm sure Michaels could link this for you, is to invest in a, um, what is it? I wish mine is out in my kitchen right now because, oh no, I used it. I forget where I put it, but it is an eraser. It's a, um, one of the multiple needed erasers. If you look at my Instagram, I posted why you need a needed eraser. You can basically knead the um, pencil off the paper without it um, smudging. Okay, so because I um, do this often, I just eyeball it. And we're gonna do the letters L, O, and then the E for love. We're Valentine's Day. I also included a free downloadable lettering guide for you guys to um, copy for cards. Like you could copy um, the thinking of you. You could copy any lettering design you want. I loved this one. You could also do this XOXO right here. Um, but listen to my instruction first so you know how to do this part to make it look um, as close to perfect as handmade gets. So I'm gonna do the L. So the first thing I'm going to do now, again, listen to this closely, is I'm gonna put the straight line right here. Okay, now this part is key. We're gonna do double, we're gonna double up these lines. Okay, so I'm gonna put another line right next to it. Now you're gonna see how it has this overlap line in the middle. Um, it's hard to tell, let's see, you see how that overlaps right there in the middle? That is key, we need that. We need that for the next step. So I'm gonna do the L, bottom of the L and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do one and then I'm gonna come underneath and I'm gonna do two, okay? I want that overlapping piece. Oh, I don't, guys, I don't like how that's not perfect right there. So I'm gonna make that perfect. I guess I'm going over it twice now because I did not want that edge. Now I'm gonna do the O. The O can be a little tricky. So if you're doing this with me, watch first, then do it, okay? So we're gonna go and do the O. Okay, we want it to look more like a round O. I did this on purpose. So I'm gonna come in on this side and go down. And then I'm gonna come in on this side and go down and see how it's more of a round O. Okay, now to the V. Also, please note, you can see that overlap line. That is key, you need that. Okay, now we're gonna do the V. One line, we're gonna come in and do another line, okay? Now we're gonna do the other side. One line, come in and do the other line. Now with the V, I typically want the straight line at the bottom. So I'm gonna come in and add that at the bottom, okay? With the E, same thing. One line, two lines, and you can tell I didn't quite overlap it. That's okay, you won't see that at the end. And we're gonna do the two lines for each piece as we go. Okay, I wanted that a little higher. I guess I'm coming down again. 
and that's okay. That's a little skitty wampus, but I am okay with that because then it's handmade. I'll just elevate these and do double strokes now on each one. Was not planning on doing that. That's a single stroke one, but I guess I do like how with the double stroke over it, it gets a little darker. Even though I do these things all the time, I still make mistakes and that's why we grow from mistakes. Okay. So with the click art pen, give me a second. I need a drink. My throat is dry. Okay. With the click art pen, we're going to click it open and to make this mid century modern look, um, we, Oh, camera is frozen. Screen frozen. Let's refresh. Stop video. Refresh video. Okay. That helped. Okay. So for this mid-century look, let's see if I can zoom in for these um, words right here. Yes. Maybe that will make it clear. Let's see. Okay. Hold on. We're focusing. Focusing focusing. Okay. Let me just see right here. Focus. Give me a second guys. Thank you for your patience today. Okay. How's that? Is that, um, is it flipped much clearer? Perfect. Maybe it was the distance. Is it flipped to you guys or is it just flipped to me? Let's see. It's good. Okay. Okay. So since we're closer and you guys can see here, um, the key is to, okay, hold on. I'm going to do show you guys. So the reason why you can't see my line is we're going to use that to our advantage. Okay. I did that first and I want it, the edge shifted down and I'm not going to lie. Like I should show you another one I did. Um, I think I kept it as recycled. I'm, I still mess up sometimes on these type of things. And if you do, you just pull it off and replace it. So I'm going to shift the edge down. And the first thing I'm going to do is follow this. And because I'm shifting it to the left, I don't want to go all the way to the edge. Okay. So we're going to start a little bit down, go down that line, go over this way and don't go straight to the edge. I have to start that way. It helps keep me in line. I'm then going to do the edges. So I want this to go a little lower and then I want this to go out a little bit from the L. Now I just connect the, the lines. So we're going to move this down here and this over here. So there you go. See how it covers up those lines of the overlapping mild liner. Perfect. We need those edges. The next we're going to do the O. Same thing. It's easier for me to start on this mid section to cover up the line with a little bit down. So I'm going to go right here and then I'm going to come over on this side and I'm going to go because this one's going to connect over here, right here and go a little bit down. Okay. You guys see that now we'll do this, finish out this middle edge circle. And we'll finish out the outer outline. Okay, I hope that made sense with the O. If I'm gonna redo it too, just so you guys, the O is a little bit more tricky because of the way it's done. So let me get this out for you. I'll do a bigger one. Okay, let's see. I'm just gonna circle up here, circle up here. And I'll just leave that spot just, okay. So the first thing you do is the one overlapping the mild liner right here. And then we're gonna overlap it here, but go down a little bit. Then this one comes around and connects here. And this one comes around and connects the outer one. Hopefully that helps. The O is a little bit, you might want to sketch that one out just with the connecting lines, or if it, if it helps to do one at a time to do this outer one, for some reason, for me, it just helped to have that, um, mild liner overlap, um, covered first to create that look. 
Um, anyway, now we're going to go to the V. So again, shift it down a little bit, which works out because I had that overlap and shift it over to the left. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to overlap this and then I'm going to do this one and bring it all the way down. I'm going to make this line like this, this line like this, and then I'm going to connect them. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the E. The E again, there's so many edges and lines. We'll take it step by step. So let's first do, which one do I first wanna do? I'll first do this one. Bring this over, extend it, okay? Then we'll bring this down and over, but not all the way over, remember and up to that line. We're going to trace the line and to this point where it overlaps, go up, but not all the way up and over. Not all the way over. Now we're gonna go up to the midline, over to this midline, bring it up and over. Okay, so now we have the love part, love it. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna go to this outline step next. To do this, we're gonna take this pink mild liner, okay? And I am going to add a background. Let's see, I'm gonna use this one right here. Um, I don't wanna get this on um, this table. I did last night on my kitchen table because it was granite and it's easy to wipe off, but um, this is gonna go, we're gonna push it off the paper. So with that in mind, you can put something under your paper or you can just get on your table and wipe it off later. I, like I said, last night I just wiped it off later. Okay, so the first step is we're gonna take the bullet point of the mild liner and we're gonna outline this, um, the back of this card. I'm gonna do a separate color because that might make it difficult for you guys to see. We'll use the screen when I do that part. Okay, so I'm gonna outline the pink that is next to it. And I kind of hold it tight against that edge. I gotta hurry up so we can do the next card. Ah, okay, we're gonna hold it tight against the edge. And I apologize that I'm gonna go fast on the next part because I really do wanna get to this card before hour is up. I love this one really stoked on that. So bear with me if I'm going fast, No, you can watch this on replay um, afterwards, okay? I'm gonna take the chisel tip and there's literally no rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna make lines that look nicely spaced. I don't think too much about the spacing. The only thing I want is kind of this edge right here to be um, in line right with the edge. Don't know why, that just was nice for me. So I'm gonna go down this way. I read a quote once that if it was perfect, it wouldn't be handmade. So I kind of like the imperfections that come with not measuring it out because it was made by me. Also, I did not measure my line straight, but that's okay. Okay, we're gonna pull this down. This, this, this. Bear with me as I go fast. We've got one more card to do. Bring it off the edge. Okay, sweet. The next thing we're gonna do is grab the bullet chip of the purple and make an XOXO around the outer part. X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O, X, O. See how versatile this mild liner is? We got those straight block lines with the chisel tip and now we're getting the nice bullet chip tip. It's nice because it's basically like two markers in one. I also use these to 
do watercolor pieces, to do coloring books, to do a bunch of random stuff. They are very versatile. I did a portrait picture of my son with them and their other colors. Okay. Okay, now lastly is taking the clip uh, click art and doing the heart and dots. And I'm just gonna do heart dot, heart dot, heart dot, heart. I don't know why I have to narrate that, but heart and dot. Um, perfect, hold on, I wanna flip it so the hearts are this way this time, not. Okay, let's see here. Again, I um, do claim the term my niche is not having a niche. So you guys are welcome to reach out on social media if you ever think of an idea that you want to learn. And to be completely honest, I probably um, could teach like a little bit of everything and everything because I just like to do it all my brain will do it and then run out of dopamine and then I'll find the next art project to do and then I just circle around and it's super fun to do and it comes in handy when there's certain holidays to make cards or um gifts for people like you could easily not make this a card and make it so it's a frameable piece and give it to a loved one for valentine's day to use as decorations as well okay and just like that that card is done now i wasn't sure like you guys could experiment doing some background designs here adding dots or adding little hearts or xoxo whatever you want but as of right now i love the basic design of this. I think it looks super professional while at the same time looking handmade um, and would work great to send to any sort of loved one um, or teacher or um, anyway. Okay. This one I'm really excited about. This one's funky and cool. And this is the measurements right here. Okay. So we're going to run them down and do the measurements really. So we have 20 minutes. I want to make sure now we can decorate this back part. You probably will want to. I'm going to show you two different ways you could do this with making this one, but also explaining another one you could do with that heart paper I recommended getting. Um, I went to make this with the heart paper and I decided to do it this way instead. So let's pull out our cutting device. Grab the desired color you have me i'm going to do this light color again just to show you guys and we're going to do the um and since it's better zoomed in more clear i'm going to keep it zoomed in but oh wait that's not the right color sorry let's see that's not it i think this is the second to lightest color i used from the pack yes this one right here yep this is the second lightest color in that pink pack Okay, so hold on. Okay, so this is the 11 um, inch side. We don't need to cut that side down. Am I frozen again? Okay, let's see if that helps. Um, one second, let's refresh. Do, 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 do. I don't know why my Zoom has frozen, but my camera has not. I don't have a singing voice. Um, Y'all let me know, is it unfrozen for you or is it frozen? Let me know in that group chat really quick. Frozen, that's what I thought, what the heck? It's gotta be Zoom, cause I look at my camera view and it's not frozen, but I look at the Zoom view and it's frozen. Let's try one more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we are. Okay, so the measurements are 
right? I'm going to put it, um, if someone, if my zebra pen or Michael's friends could add the measurements that we need, um, we're going to cut this to four and a half right now. Okay. So the background of the card is four and a half, and then I'll explain these measurements, um, as we go. So, um, let's see. It's weird sideways, but at least I can get it on the frame too for you. So we're going to go to four and a quarter on this one, which is right here. Make sure it's completely lined up and cut that. All right. The next thing we're going to do is if you have this device, move it to the scoring side. Bam. And we are going to score this to 4.25, which will be this lower section right here. This one's 4.25. Then this middle section is four point four and a half. And then this one is two and a quarter. Okay. Um, here we go. We're going to take this top. Well, this will be the top part. So right here, as you can tell, we're going to do two and a quarter. So two and a quarter right there. I am going to make sure it's perfectly aligned. We are a go two and a quarter. Push down hard to score that and it's perfect. Obsessed. Okay, the next one we're going to do is um, four and a half. So if we go two, that's one, two, guys, three, I'm an artist, not a math, four and a half would be um, six and three quarters. Did I do that math right? I think I did. Um, the score measurements you asked again. So the first, um, the, the overlap area that I just did is 2.25. So two and one quarter. And then I'm doing four and a half right now. And then the last bit will be um, four and a quarter. So um, you got, yeah, I measured that. I did my math wrong. I must have. Here's the deal. I'm just going to line this corner up, this edge up. There we go. That's easier. That's how I did it when I made that card previously. And I'm going to just go to the four and a half marker. Then I don't have to do math to make sure I got it right. And I'm going to score that one at four and a half. Perfect. Okay. The last one then that will make this one four and well, that one is four and a half. I went down on that one. Okay. This one overlaps a little bit more, but that's okay. Okay, bam, we have this part of the card as a gun. As you can tell, this is right here. Perfect. Um, so I guess at the end, if you, you could cut off a little bit of this edge, I don't remember doing that. I don't know why this one end up differently. I'm, let's see, I gotta measure it. I guess I just scored it. Oh, I scored the bottom differently. That was the problem. That's okay. Okay. Um, here we go. So yeah, follow my instructions on this one being four and a quarter, this one being four and a half, and this one being two and a quarter. All right. So we overlap this right here. Now this one, we're going to do the drawing design first before we add any paper. All right, y'all, here's the two options you can do. This option where I did the hearts in the background with the mid-century type look, um, or you can do the XOXO um, with, let me show you the example I have. Hold on, I made, okay. Um, you could do the background as XOXO. Um, oh my gosh, this is so frustrating with the freezing. I am so sorry. We're just gonna, um, I'll give you a cool fact about what would you like to know? Um, go look up some mid-century illustrations and you'll find some cool inspiration for cards because of the way they overlap. Okay, here we go. 
So um, here I sketched out different things you could do for this background. If you wanted to then add um, this heart paper where this XOXO part is. Um, so those are two different ways you could make this card. You could use um, this look where the XOXO is highlighted on the same colors, like outlined with the same colors, or you could outline them with opposite colors. Um, this was with the Curage and the Click Art um, showing both ways that you could make this. But for purpose of this class, I'm gonna show you guys the heart. So we're gonna take the mild liner and um, I added Cure Rich on here, but because I put it as optional for the class, I'm just gonna use the mild liners from the journaling set. And we're gonna take the bullet chip. If you want, you could use the chisel tip and make um, some hearts. This time I'm gonna make the hearts a little bit bigger just to get a different variety of look of cards. Um, so let's draw some hearts just randomly around and color them in. Um, let's see. Color them in. So um, for me, I have, my brain is more neurodivergent. So I have what's called ADHD. However, it used to be regarded as ADD, which, cause I don't have the hyperactive part. Mine is um, called inattentive ADHD, which essentially has nothing to do with the, probably the stereotypes that you've heard. I just, um, it's more like I follow the dopamine. Like it's super easy for me to bust out any creative projects, but the idea of doing anything boring like laundry is literally the worst thing in the world. Like it is like tearing out toenails to do laundry sometimes. Um, and with that, it has made it so um, I do hop around um, creativity and hop around projects a lot. And I had a purpose of telling you guys why um, I was telling you that. Um, but the main thing is probably because that just explains why I am the way I am. I like to hop around and I have no problem focusing. I love to focus on things that bring me joy and that aren't boring. So contrary to like some stereotypes that come with it, I am very much different. I'm not hyperactive. I very much can focus just on things that spark joy and not boringness. Like, well, sometimes laundry sparks joy if I find different ways of like folding my clothes, but let's be honest, it's a rudimentary task. Same with dishes, blah. And um, so projects like this really get me to hyper-focus and is super fun to do. Again, I had a point, but it flew out of my brain. So I don't know what my point was in telling you guys that. Other than, oh, I know what it was, drawing and creating. I cannot meditate, guys. Like I literally like to sit and like try to meditate. My brain just does not do it. Like it does not meditate. However, I can in ways meditate while doing art like this. Like I feel so Zen, which is funny because Zebra's um, slogan is find Zen in your pen. But I really do like to draw and create is the most like Zen experience for me. I can't sit and meditate. My brain like literally jumps from one thing to the other. But when I'm drawing and I'm focusing on line placement and coloring in, um, I don't know if that's the same for some of you guys, but it is so um, relaxing and so de-stressing to do something like this where I'm just like coloring in these hearts. Um, so maybe some of you guys are like that too, who knows, but as much as sometimes that side of me frustrates me, like I can't just sit and meditate and just like feel calm. I'm glad to know that this is a way that I can meditate and feel that peace that sometimes other people feel while meditating. Um, okay. So I'm almost done with this heart part. Um, I recommend you do the background of it to bring it all together. Um, I am so sorry about this frozen screen thing. I don't know why. Hold on. Hopefully my narrating along helps it get a little better. 
Okay. Um, okay, so let's color this last piece in. Like I said, do the background for yourself, like for if you're gonna give this card to someone, but for purposes of this class, I'm just gonna do the main areas that you see. Okay, um, now on this card right here, I hearted, um, like I outlined it with the same color. So the purple was outlined with the purple. I'm going to outline it opposite colors on this card. So choose what you like, whatever look you like the best. I want a variety for when I gift this card to other people. Um, and I'm going to start doing, um, and not a perfect overlap, but an overlap to the left. And again, it's not perfect. So for this card, I use some of the Sarasa clip pink, which I might make smaller hearts and do the Sarasa clip. We'll wait. But for these mild liner hearts, I use the click art to outline it. So I'm going to outline the purple in pink to create a different look and to give you guys also different ideas and different options. Like I said, I suggest you do a Google search of um, mid-century illustration or those type of vibes. It's, and you'll get lots of inspiration on just drawing and outlining, like drawing with a marker and outlining with a thinner point marker. Oops, look, I messed up. I did that one, but that's okay. It, no one will notice. Let's just not draw attention to it. When I gift it, no one's going to look and see oh, that one was outlined incorrectly. Unless I gift it to one of you guys, then you'd know I've outed myself on that one. Dang it. Okay. So we're going to outline, outline. Oh, first press. Okay. I'm going to hurry so that you guys can get the basic um, before the time. Okay. Let's just, I'll outline some of the purple just to show you where did I put my purple click art pen right here. Okay. I'm going to outline some of these pinks. Actually, I'm going to outline the pinks that are low key going to be covered. That way, when I finish this card off screen, I'm not stuck with some hearts that are under things that are glued. Okay, so these ones are good. I do need to do these ones because these ones will have a glued. Let's fix this. I just know myself and that would bother me. Okay. Um, for purpose of this class, we're going to move forward. Um, this one, I use the same color and I'm going to um do let's see actually i will do the same color as this and like before i'm just gonna do a pencil marking because these are big or hearts i'll make the xoxo smaller um and those are the lines i want to make guys just know i'm cutting right now the line for that design Give me a second to line that up. And here we go. And I just want you guys to be able to see the whole process of this card. Um, even just so that you guys can see it, even though we're short on time. Okay. This one is smaller, but I like it because so on this card, I did the middle area longer. Um, because my hearts were smaller, but because my hearts are bigger on this one, I'm going to make this cut out a little bit smaller so you can see the hearts peeking through. Also, I will add the dots later. So add dots. I think that adds a fun little accent and makes it very playful. I'm using the tape to tape this piece on. Okay. Estimate right. Hold on, let's pull this over. That looks good. I'm going to take this black, bring this in frame so you guys can see. I'm going to take this black click art and highlight around that box. And again, on these things, um, I provided a free um, guide of words you can copy. I put it in gray so you could um practice over it too if you're not um if you're new to lettering okay so this xoxo i rotate between the purple and the pink oh a um, mid-century modern look 
is what you want to Google for inspo. And I do pink, purple, pink, purple, um, every other. And I use the chisel tip for this. So pink, X, purple, O, pink, X, purple, O, pink, X, which is a little squish, but that's okay. And then we're gonna do purple O, pink X, purple O, pink X, purple O. Now with the XOXO, I'll show you a couple um, and move on. But again, this one I don't do as exact. I kind of like that it looks playful and funky and not exact um, overlapping. It's just random, unlike the love we did before. Um, okay, so you can tell it's just not perfect. It's just fun and loose and not worried about too much. Okay, so I'll just stop there. Now, um, for the, for this um, ribbon part, you'll cut the ribbon and you're gonna tape the back of this ribbon right here so that when you place it down, it doesn't move. So this is taped on, okay? Um, so I will do that. Oh, someone already finished too and put them out in the mailbox. You are amazing. Jeez. Okay. So you'll do that right there for these. You'll cut out that heart in the other colors with the accent of green. Green is a complementary color of pink, the lighter green. That's why it works so well together. Match your, um, ribbon to a color that is close and bust out that color. This one worked great with both the lighter and this one, the darker. So you layer on, um, you cut that in the proper size, which I put right here. Green is 1.5 by two inches. I eyeball the others just like I did before. And then I cut out the hearts, one in green, one in pink to layer on top. And then I wrote out be mine with the um, click art. And I, I provided this um, lettering prompt in um, the free downloadable PDF um, that you could download from this class. So you could easily mimic that. Um, also something you could do is with the hearts, you could put one and outline it and make it like a cute little balloon. And then when you make it a balloon, watch this, you could do a cute little heart outline around just like this, keep it the same vibes. And then you could make a cute little balloon into the B, B mine that way. So that was an idea. You could also make it, outline it and do little petals around it. And this looks like a lion, but you get the idea because we're lack of time and do like a flower into the B mine. And that's just a different idea that I had for you guys. So with that, I'm so sorry we got short on time. I, um, and I'm sorry it was blurry for part of it, but thank you for sticking with me. If you have any questions, feel free to message me or email me or hit up Zebra, whatever you guys like. Um, and I, hello, would like to say a goodbye and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I was peeking through there. Thank you again. And sorry about the blurriness.